Hi, I'm Mark from Valor Excel. Thank you for joining me. Today I'd like to show you how you can add a voiceover to a video using Microsoft ClipChamp. If you're unfamiliar with ClipChamp, I'll leave a link in the description below this video for a tutorial that we did a while back that will walk you through all of the functionality and features of ClipChamp. It's a very powerful online video editing tool, and even if you've never done any video editing before, I think you'll find that it's user-friendly, intuitive, and it really does produce great results. Now, in today's video, we're not going to be doing any video editing, but I will show you a couple of different approaches that you can take for adding a voiceover. Now, just putting a video project together where you assemble clips is a very important start. It certainly elevates them beyond just raw footage, but when you add a voiceover, you're truly bringing your project to the next level. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about what we have here. Now, I decided I wanted a fairly short video project that we could work with, so I've created one that's just a little shy of 30 seconds. It's comprised of five different clips. These are all wilderness clips that I did, all outdoors, and I put them together with just some basic editing Coming from this clip into the last one, I just have a little bit of a fade. And then a fade out at the end. Now, you may have noticed there was a little bit of audio dropout. Don't let that worry you when you're working in ClipChamp and you're editing. When you're doing a playback, you may hear dropout. Sometimes that'll occur as you go from one clip to the next. That will not appear in your finished product once you export it, so don't let that concern you. But it's a good idea to go through and, first of all, really listen to all of your clips. Play your entire project from start to finish. Now, in doing so, I noticed that there were a couple of issues on mine. There was some talking at the beginning of this clip, and these next three had some pretty significant wind noise. So I actually made the decision to just go ahead and mute these. And it's very easy to mute a clip. All you have to do is click here in the clip on this little speaker icon, and you can toggle mute on and mute off. And when it's muted, you'll see a small X that appears beside it. Whenever you click on a clip, up here it will open this vertical toolbar, and you have an audio option, and it's showing that the volume is at 0% because it's muted. Now, it is a good starting point before you add your voiceover to go the entire way through your project and do some volume balancing on all the clips. You don't want to have a situation where one clip is significantly louder than the others. It'll stick out like a sore thumb, and when you do add a voiceover, it will never blend properly. So try to get the overall volume balance relatively consistent, and that'll be a good starting point for you. Now, in this last clip, You'll notice that I've set the volume at 41%. I really like the sound of the rushing water, but I felt like it was perhaps a little bit louder than I would have liked it to be, and in anticipation of adding the voiceover, I just reduced it down to 41%. So again, I suggest starting there. It just gives you a good, even balance to begin with. So the first approach that I'd like to show you involves recording your voiceover using another program. And in my case, I actually did that using Persona Studio One. I'll leave a link in the description below for a tutorial that we did on how to record a voiceover in Persona Studio One. That's a professional grade recording and editing software, but you don't even have to go that route. You can use a free alternative like Audacity. The goal is to get a good quality recording and then export it as a WAV file or an MP3 that you can then import into your project in ClipChamp through the Import Media function, and that's what I've done with mine. Now, an easy way to use another program is to have your finished video project. Simply play the video, and while you're watching it, record the voiceover, and then when you're done, export that file. So what I'd like to do is take the voiceover that I recorded, bring it down here, and drop it in my timeline underneath the video clips. And as you can see, it has a waveform on it. It's giving us 
a graphic representation of the actual recorded signal. That's an easy way to tell where there are gaps between the different sections. And I can slide this forward or backward to position it wherever I would like. So I'll put it about there. Let's go back to the beginning and let's see what we have so far. This is a quick glimpse of just a few of the animals that I saw last weekend at a local farm. I love animals, and being able to see these at close range was a real treat. I also took a little bit of time to take a brief stroll through the woods where I found a beautiful little wooden bridge with a gurgling brook underneath. Very nice. Now one of the really nice things about ClipChamp is that it really takes the pressure off when it comes to synchronizing the audio with the video. When you're recording your voiceover, invariably you'll wind up getting off a little bit from what's happening in the video image. And that's okay because you can take your existing audio track and actually slice it into separate pieces and individually position them wherever you would like them to be in regard to the video. So if you grab the playhead, you can drag back and I'm going to go here and position it about there. We know we're in between two different sections of dialogue. And now if I right click, I have a split option. And by selecting that, it has now separated the audio into two separate clips. So I'm going to keep that one where it is, but I wanna take this one and drag it the whole way back to the beginning. And now let's see what we have. This is a quick glimpse of just a few of the animals that I saw last weekend at a local farm. I love animals. And being able to see these at close range was a real treat. What's nice about this is it is extremely flexible. You can slice your audio up into as many small sections as you need and have complete control over where they fit in relationship to the video itself. Now I think that's pretty good, but one other thing I'd like to do is add some background music. And one of the really nice features of ClipChamp is that there is a music and sound effects library. If you click here, you can search through all the audio. There are many, many different choices, and you can basically export any of these down into your timeline. I'm actually going to use a piece that I already have in place and I'll drag it down and I want to position it so that it's starting right at the beginning of our video. And now what I want to do with this is it will probably be much louder than the voiceover. So initially I'm going to drop the volume the entire way down and go back to the beginning and I'll just bring it in and gradually bring the volume up so that it's in a good balance in relationship to the voiceover. This is a quick glimpse of just a few of the animals that I saw last weekend at a local farm. I love animals, and being able to see these at close range was a real treat. I also took a little bit of time to take a brief stroll through the woods where I found a beautiful little wooden bridge with a gurgling brook underneath. There was a little bit of audio drop out there. And again, don't worry about that. That won't be in your finished project when you do export it. But you might notice there's an issue here. The track that I added for the background music is much longer than the video itself. And that's easily remedied. If I position the playhead here, I'll do the same thing that I did up here. I'll right click and hit split. And now I can just delete the section that we don't need. And so that we don't have an abrupt ending here, if I click on the piano, I can come up here and select fade, and I'll do a fade out of about one second so that we don't have an abrupt end. So let's see what we've got. I'll go from about here. With a gurgling brook underneath. Very nice. So that's one way that you can add a voiceover. But you may be in a situation where you don't necessarily feel that you can do a quality voiceover. Maybe you don't have any audio equipment. If that describes you, I'll show you a great alternative, a really cool feature of ClipChamp. So first I wanna go in and remove the voiceover that I did. 
Now, what you can do is actually have ClipChamp create a voiceover for you. And you can do that by coming up here and clicking on Record and Create. And down at the bottom, selecting the option Text to Speech. It opens up this dialog box. And now what this will enable you to do is to go in and type whatever it is that you would like the AI to generate a voiceover for. So I'm actually going to add the script that I just read in my own recording and we'll have the AI create a voiceover based on what I type. Now, I did want to point out that you have a maximum duration of 10 minutes for your text-to-speech, but I've added the entire script that I had recorded myself. And now what we can do is go back here and let's preview it and see what we've got. This is a quick glimpse of just a few of the animals that I saw last weekend at a local farm. I love animals, and being able to see these at close range was a real treat. I also took a little bit of time to take a brief stroll through the woods where I found a beautiful little wooden bridge with a gurgling brook underneath. And that's pretty nice. And if you click here, you'll see there are a lot of different options that you can select. Uh, let's try one of these. This is a quick glimpse of just a few of the animals that I saw last weekend at a local farm. Now, I did want to mention it will default to the speech speed being usually right around fast. And I tend to just go with that. I've noticed that when you slow it down, even to regular, a lot of times it just doesn't sound natural. It just kind of loses the cadence of a human voice. Feel free to experiment with it, but I generally just go with the defaults. There are a lot that you can select in here, and I'm just going to go ahead and go with this one. And now what we can do is click on Save to Media, and it has now been added to our media up there. So we can click, hold, and drag that down as we did before, just positioning it right there. And there you go. So let's go back to the beginning and see what we've got for that. This is a quick glimpse of just a few of the animals that I saw last weekend at a local farm. Now, one of the things that I noticed is that she's talking a lot faster than I was. So I'm going to actually separate this into a couple of different sections because I know just about where I would like the individual narration pieces to be. And I'm going to put that about there, put that closer to the beginning and keep that right around there. And I also feel like the piano is a little bit too loud now. So I'm going to reduce the volume on that just a little bit. I love animals, and being able to see these at close range was a real treat. I also took a little bit of time to take a brief stroll through the woods where I found a beautiful little wooden bridge with a gurgling brook underneath. And again, just as with the one that I had recorded, you can move these around, put them wherever you want them to be. And it's nice, too, because depending on what's happening with your music or maybe even in your source video, you can even have a certain clip have a louder volume level than the other ones if you want a little bit more emphasis on something or if there is a little bit of competition from the other things going on in the background. You have tremendous flexibility, and it really does take the pressure off from an editing perspective. So that's a great way to add a voiceover if you don't have your own recording equipment. And again, when you're completely done, all you have to do is hit export and your project will be exported good to go. Well, I hope that this was helpful for you. ClipChamp is a great tool and being able to add a voiceover truly does take your productions to the next level. If you feel like you need to take your business to the next level, I have a free tool that can help you. If you click on the link in the description below this video, you can download a PDF called Taking Your Organization's Temperature. It'll give you a great insight into the health of your organization and make you start thinking about ways you could improve what you're doing. If this video was helpful for you, will you please give it a like? And in the comments below, let me know, have you ever done a voiceover, either live or using AI? I'd also like to invite you to subscribe to Valor XL. 
We publish new content on a regular basis, and all of it is specifically tailored for small businesses and nonprofits. Thanks again for joining me. I invite you to come back for the next installment, and remember at Valor XL, we're committed to helping you do smart work. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. Until then, goodbye for now.